Hi, this is a short walkthrough showing one way of creating test leads. Although it's easy just to buy pre-made test leads, sometimes custom ones are needed. To build the test leads, these are the parts that I used. Red and black cable is needed, of course. This particular type has hundreds of strands for lots of flexibility. It basically feels as flexible as any usual test leads for multimeters. This cable is designed to support more than a kilovolt and has passed the appropriate flame tests and so on. These banana plugs have a screw terminal, so no soldering is needed. Instructions are inside the packet as well. Some glue is needed to secure the screw so that it doesn't loosen over time. And there is special thread lock adhesive that could be used, uh, but probably any super glue could be used at a stretch. Anyway, the correct lock type adhesive is not not expensive and will last a really long time because just a drop is used at a time. A tinned copper ferrule is also needed. This one is intended for 25 millimeter squared conductor cross-section, uh, but it's actually fine for 2 millimeter squared cables too. I've reviewed this crimp tool in the past, and together with the ferrules, I found it really handy for solving a lot of cable connection issues. And finally, some hand tools are needed as well. I don't have a wire stripper suitable for this very flexible cable, so a scalpel will be used for now. The scalpel isn't ideal, but it will work for the few test cables that I need to assemble. The strands in this cable are really thin, so even a slight nick can damage strands. The insulation is really soft, so I don't need to cut down to the conductor. It's really easy to check that I've not reached too deep by bending the cable and then the insulation can just be torn off by hand. At this point it's really easy to see if there's any damage by just looking to see if any strands have separated. The way the wire was originally twisted is the way I'm trying to get the wire to remain so that it's just gently twisted. This cable is two millimeters squared so the ferrule will fit on with no effort so that every single strand is inside. The crimped result with this tool is of a square or, or other four-sided cross-section. Basically the precise shape depends on how closely the ferrule diameter matches a cable conductor diameter. I'm basically expecting a near square result because uh, this wire is just only slightly thinner. The result looks good and from experience I know that it will be now impossible to separate it from the cable without using tools. According to the instructions that came with the plug, the exposed conductor needs to be 6mm long, so it needs some trimming. This does not need to be accurate, even 7mm would be okay. So I'm going to cut this visually and then check. That looks fine. Okay, the screw is set to be fully opened as far as it goes without dropping out and I'm almost ready to attach the cable. But first the plastic upper body of the banana plug needs to be threaded over the cable. Time for the thread locking adhesive. This is too much to be honest, it needs to be a smaller amount and some of this could probably be cleaned off first. I'm now holding the ferrule so that the screw will make maximum contact with it. It can now be screwed in tightly.
I'm using a lot of force. It won't accidentally loosen because of the adhesive and the ferrule will keep the strands in place for, I think, the best possible contact with this type of plug. Finally, it's a quick job to finish all this off. The plastic shield goes on first, then the spring. And then basically push it all together until it clicks. It all fits in quite neatly, actually. The plastic shield retracts when needed, so this banana plug has quite a nice design. That's it, all ready to use. Thanks for watching.